yards on the defense. It's the Bears and the Vikings, and it comes your way next. Spread between 4th and 6th Streets in downtown Minneapolis, we welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. Today, we've got a good Week 5 matchup in store here between the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings. Here we are back more with some Outlander Show Madden 23 franchise mode. Here we are, the Bears undefeated going in right here to week five against the Minnesota Vikings. Let's see what happens, what takes place. Can we continue the undefeated streak or will we perish? Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, it's been all systems going this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And as Gap folks believe that this is a team that's built to go all the way. You can't win the Super Bowl in September, but they're telling everyone that they're going to be there in the end. season already in the rear view mirror and off we go in week five on EA Sports. No run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by the second year man from the Ohio State University, Justin Fields. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team won, managed the game effectively, led them to victory. He's doing all the right things. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now it's Fields. Going up top. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Not the desired outcome, but probably won't be the last time we see him take a shot downfield. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Chicago! He goes 67 yards on the punt return. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. They get the stop defensively, force the punt. They score without their offense even stepping on the field. I remember playing and playing on special teams and teasing the guys on offense like, look, you don't even, don't even worry about it. You got to just hang out over there. We'll bring this one all the way back and get the points we need. In this case, they actually got that done. Gano the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. But it's no secret. That's why they have him return punts. He has the capability to take him back, and he did so there. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than that. They got the right people. Exactly. That too. <laughs> so here's the 
here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the delay, here's Harris. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. A look at the numbers for Harris in last week's game. 17 carries, 56 yards, and a touchdown. They're coming off of back-to-back -back wins, and I think a lot of credit belongs to this guy right here because, to me, he's not only carried his weight, he's carried a few other guys along as well. He's helped draw defensive attention away from not just him, but open things up for his teammates, too. So if this winning streak is going to continue to have some legs to it, he has to remain effective and put together another nice game. First down, Fields. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. 20! Touchdown, Vikings! Jalen Waddle, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings are an extra point away from drawing level. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And sometimes you see big plays develop on a route like this, a slam route. And the object, very simple. Get the ball to your receiver in stride. This one was right on the money. He didn't miss a beat. And then it's off to the races. And there he goes. And the final clocking on the next-gen stats there. How about this? 22.1 miles per hour. Wow. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. Leading them out, the third-year player from Oklahoma by way of Alabama, Jalen Hurts. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Mario Davis there on the stop. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. It's a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Now they were looking to throw, holding on a big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. Hurt sets up to throw it. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. To Marvin Leal brings him down, and that's a play he's going to remember. The first sack of his NFL career. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. And here's Hoff Richter now, the punter, as he sends this one away. And it's fielded at the 34. A good head down running on the return gets about 15 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And yeah, we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. On second down, this is Harris. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. 7-7, our score after one. 
Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks as they've got it with a third down coming up. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Henry. And he will have the Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Normally on third down and short yards, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Now a first down carry for Harris to about the 26 here. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, he shot in, CD, like he was out of a cannon from that linebacker position. And even though they had a running back in the backfield, no one could stop him. Well, you certainly diagnosed that play perfectly because as fast as he got into the backfield, you're exactly right. The running back had no shot to get over and try to protect his quarterback, and a sack resulted. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Flush to his right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to the hurdle. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could. But let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. He certainly did. And he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage. And he did, but not enough. The kick by McManus is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks have told us ended with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides. But sometimes the pressure's a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that. They're trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. To throw once more on second and 10. Hurts. And he fires one incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple big complete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. <laughs> Out of the gun now on third down. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. And they'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. On oh, the sneak, it's Hurts. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. They only needed a few inches, but still some anxious moments there. But they do convert on fourth. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And some space here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Holding offense. That's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. First round pick back in 2012. Let's go now. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. Ready? Go. 
from the shotgun. He'll look to throw. That's complete into the hands of Myers. The Bears moving hastily in the hurry up offense. To throw again on second down. Hurts. They will fire this complete to Hurst down the field. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 32-yard line. From the gun, it's Hurts. Over the middle to back him. And he's going to get this down near the 25. From the 25 on second down, Hurts going right back to Beckham here, complete. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Touchdown! Aiden Hurst, his first touchdown on the air. And the Bears will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point try, good by Gannon. And the lead is now 14 to 10. A 10 play drive that time. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Fields. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waiting moments of quarter number two. The kick by McManus is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we reach halftime with a bit message received here. No need to wait. We're going to skip halftime and get right back to the action. Here comes the third quarter. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. But first down, Hurts. Flushed out right. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. It's caught. Back up. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Here's Hurts to throw. Again, it's OBJ, back-to-back -back catches. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. First down for Odell Beckham Jr. We can finally say it, partner. OBJ got his ring. 
really fit in with the Rams once he got there and was invaluable in leading them to a Super Bowl victory. Suffered a knee injury in that game, but he's back and ready for an encore in 2022. They'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They give those two yards right back. And now they're looking at a third and ten. Right where this set of downs started. They need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Throwing his hurts. It's caught by LBJ. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is 40. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off a big chunk. As shown by that last play. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, 21 yards. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Touchdown, Bears! On Al Beckham with career touchdown number 60. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Gano the extra point, and the lead is up to eight. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's OBJ, Odell Beckham, who ends it with a touchdown reception. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Off play action, Fields. Dancing to his left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing on third down. Fields. He's going to let this one go deep. He's got a man complete. And he's going to get this down near the 25. In there. A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Now a first down throw. Fields. That's caught. Waddle on the left side. And they've got this down to about the 12 yard line. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. This is caught. Touchdown, Vikings. Kadarius Terry, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. That's caught at the one. And he'll get into the end zone, and those two points are going to tie the game. 
So they go with the pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational. You have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball on a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. We got a brand new ball game all even after that last touchdown. So every drive now becoming a little more critical here in the second half. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a game of three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Now second and seven from the 23. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beat. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Now the throw on third down. Knocked away and incomplete. Here comes the Bears player now. As he'll kick it away for the second time. And here's a very low line drive. Almost whiffed on it. Taken on the midfield logo. Twisting away. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Vikings will be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity. All tied in the fourth quarter. Henry's got it. At the left side. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Right back to Henry, and Henry's got it again. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. It doesn't matter where in the field he is, even down here in the red zone, he is still slippery with the ball in his hands, and he was almost able to work his way into the end zone. Instead, they'll have to settle for first and goal, but they'll take it. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Damian Harris, his second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. On first and ten, it's Hurts. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if your team has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door to them, and that time worked well for a solid game. They hand it off to Moster. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It will be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Hurt. 
points. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked on by Micah Hyde. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got hooked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Touchdown! Jalen Ryan with its second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Vikings are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. McManus's point after is good. And the lead now up to 14. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, a long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. And no return on this one as the fair catch is single four and taken. Bears offense out there set and ready to go. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Uh, deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. On third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. Hurt sets up to throw it. That one caught by Carter. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A big gain of 28 as the drive continues. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and ten at the 47. Oh, and Hurts is going to be hit and taken down to the ground from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. They'll set up a throw. That is taken in by Hurst. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 34-yard line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now back to throw. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Hurst. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 20-yard line. Oh, I'm not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Touchdown, Bears! Odell Beckham, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Extra point try, good by Gano. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's OBJ, Odell Beckham, who ends it with a touchdown reception. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And this game not quite in hand yet. We'll likely see all three timeouts defensively and then reassess where we are. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10. And he's across for the touchdown. And the foul net that should just about seal it. I don't think you can get any more 
completion or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. And one play, 75 yards in zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent work. Talk about explosive. 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play, big time result. Showdown the Bears. Down by two touchdowns. At time, a huge factor. And their undefeated season about to go by the wayside, barring a late miracle. From the gun, it's Hurts. Pass complete, first. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Looking downfield for Jones. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. As time has run out on this football game. Well, this was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency, not fun to be a...